Hey everyone, my name is Nick Sulo. I'm an artist with a background in visual effects, working for the film and TV industry for the past decade. I'm also the co-creator of Exulo, that's known for creating the techno dystopia surreal artworks. So in today's video, I want to show you how to do a cyberpunk illustration using both 3D and 2D techniques. I'll show you some different tips and tricks within Maya using V-Ray's line tune shader and then bringing that into Photoshop and adding in some more line work and some textures, all sorts of fun things we're going to be covering today. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, uh, first off, we're going to just start uh, assembling a scene together, a sci-fi cyberpunk uh, cityscape uh, with a character in the center of the composition walking across a bridgeway. And then kind of surrounded by these sci-fi structures, just get a nice composition going with this piece. Something that kind of helps lead the eye from the character to whatever destination they may be going, which could be a doorway on the bridge. So just kind of want to start dropping in other assets, filling in the screen so it just doesn't feel too empty. So now we have a kind of this doorway that the character's leading and walking up to and just putting in other details in that doorway itself. Starting to fill in the background with different assets. Just these little details that really add to the composition. And then eventually, uh, as we finish this, we're gonna go ahead and start with the lighting. So I added in a light on screen left and then starting to introduce lights in the doorway since that's where our focus wants to be. And then also adding a lens distortion is really nice. And then we're gonna go ahead and start introducing other colors into the scene, other blues and different hues of the blue color tones as well as the orange color tone for the doorway. That way there's a bit of a contrast and it helps with the composition. We're gonna also introduce some other colors to the buildings just to add that extra nice detail of color variations. And then go ahead and just kind of fill out the background as well with some color. And then adding in some extra lighting really helps as well. So also I want to go ahead and introduce some other elements into the bridgeway. That way it just doesn't feel so empty and barren and people actually exist and live in this place. So adding in some uh, hardware tech in the foreground with cables coming out of there, that will help with the composition, kind of lead the eye forward. And then introducing the character on screen left. Just kind of girl with VR goggles and then uh, starting to introduce colors into these elements. And what I also like to do is maybe change the sky up a little bit as well. Um, add a different color in there. That way it kind of pushes the composition back more. And then we can introduce these wire cables that go from the girl's VR headset into this contraption. All these little details really help go a long way to tell like a bit of a visual story. And then we can eventually add in a texture to the bridgeway, these kind of uh, sci-fi plated displacement maps. So before we take this off to the final render, I wanna go ahead and add in one last detail in there, some trash on the bridgeway, and then some like stacked boxes in the background, as well as like a boom box on screen left. Just these final little 3D details help it and then introduce the V-Ray tune shader. And what's great about this is the tune shader line work can really uh, already feel like it's an illustration, but now at, at this point we can go ahead and take it into Photoshop and add in those final hand-drawn illustrative details. So actually before jumping into the illustration, I want to adjust the color values and the lighting in Photoshop using the different render passes. This will help push the overall color and mood of the piece and bring more balance to it. So adding in strong shadows, using the shadow pass, pumping up the lighting. And another key element to add in is more atmospheric perspective. 
This will help push back the distant buildings and give the artwork some depth and haze. And then I'm going to go ahead and just add in some other final tweaks with the color. So now at this point, we can add in those line details with the scuffs and the scratches. This will add in imperfections. So taking away from the smooth 3D surface and add in a more natural uh, wear and tear uh, to the cityscape. So just as like a quick tip, say that you don't want to hand draw all these little line details to give that kind of nuanced scratch mark in the middle. We can actually do is combine both uh, textures and then an alpha channel and then use that alpha channel to kind of paint in the scratches. So it's a little more automated, saves you a bit more time and it kind of yields a little bit of the same results. So let's go ahead and check that out. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this uh, texture that I got off of textures.com and it's scratched metal. So we can just go ahead and drop that into the scene. What we'll do is set it to overlay. And um, since we want the texture to be in this area, this kind of panel, we're going to go ahead and change the perspective to kind of align and match with that. So now it just kind of sits there. What I'm going to go ahead and do is get the curves and brighten up the brights and bring down the dark values just to the point where it kind of gives that nice detail of scratch line work and it's not too much, not too little. It's kind of a bit of a the Goldilocks theory. So that'd be that'd be too much right there if I brought it, the uh, whites down, but when I bring it back up. Just, that's kind of what I'm looking for. You can kind of already see it's it's somewhat similar to what's on the screen, right? That was hand drawn as opposed to this. So you can go ahead and merge down the curves and we can isolate this and check it out. So you can kind of really see that we can actually draw an alpha channel out of this. So we can go into channels hit control and then select RGB and it'll actually select all the values in there. Go ahead and invert that. Create a new layer and create an alpha channel. So here's our alpha channel now. And that way we can just go ahead with our paintbrush and just start painting in all those details in there. And like I said, this really does save on a lot of time. Might not get the same exact results as this, but honestly, it's just those little details. So it still yields those results that you kind of want. So it kind of adds that grime and scratch mark in the metal but also kind of still feels illustrated. So yeah, you can already tell that this is definitely helpful when it comes to saving time and just being able to keep moving on and, and applying that same kind of technique throughout the image. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add in some of the other textures to give that line detail across the rest of the buildings in the background. Like I said, it'll definitely save on time. And since these buildings kind of sit far back, we don't have to worry too much about getting crazy with the details, just so that's something there uh, that feels like there's a bit of a texture and line work to the buildings. Adding in graffiti and billboard ads uh, with using different blending modes like screen and overlay. So the billboards kind of sit naturally in the scene. And this just adds some nice extra uh, depth to the artwork. And add in different signs and letterings. Kind of helps draw the eye forward in the piece. And then uh, 
Now that the background feels like it's in a good spot, I can go ahead and add in the details in the foreground character. Add in like thicker lines, which help push uh, the character more forward. Uh, so our eye tends to want to focus on him since he's our main subject in the scene. So just adding in all those little details to him and this will really help the composition in the end. So now we're in a pretty pretty good spot here where we're almost done with the um, illustration. And it's just kind of these final tweaks, adding in a bit of a shadow to the character. This will really help kind of drive the piece to its kind of final home stretches. And then it's just little tiny detailed line work tweaks. And this is pretty much uh, almost done at this point in time. It's just about kind of cleaning up and maybe uh, adjusting some line work further. And then we can go ahead and just do some final graffiti even to the uh, to the bridge. And then go ahead and do a vignette around the artwork and maybe some minor textures and any kind of color correction. So let's go ahead and check out the before and after. So the left image being the final artwork and then the right image being the original CG render with the tune shader on top. So you can really kind of tell already that went ahead and pumped up these shadows, brightened these lights up, and then introduced some other colors like these pinks, purple on screen, right? Because on uh, the original one, it just felt a little too kind of monochromatic and it just felt a little more flat. So this adds a little more color dynamic to it and um, adding in kind of cheating a, a shadow from the character in here. You don't see it in the original CG, but adding this in, it just adds like a nice kind of illustrative detail to that. And you can really kind of see all the different nuanced details that I wasn't able to get from the, the CG render and then just taking it into Photoshop and just really driving that home. You can really kind of see even in the doorway. Adding in these kind of shapes to kind of help draw the eye. So it's focus points kind of right here. So yeah, um, this is pretty much done and I might go back in there and add in some other fun little details, but this is pretty much final. Thanks for watching on how to create a sci-fi cityscape using both the 3D and 2D techniques. I hope you enjoyed watching and how to create this illustrative cyberpunk world. So keep an eye out. There's going to be more fun tutorials coming up through NVIDIA Studio. So keep an eye out on that and we'll see you next time. See ya.